Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we're hitting several key news studies, past pulse shifts, the October solar storm, solar forcing of ground conditions, big announcements in our community, and of course, we're starting as always with the last 24 hours on our star. We find the solar flaring is returning to M-class range due to the developing sunspots. We don't have much aimed our way. The huge dark coronal hole is occupying the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes, and that coronal hole will magnetically connect to Earth between tonight and Tuesday. It's an earthquake watch, with its enhanced solar wind arriving one to three days later, likely to cause low-level geomagnetic storms. We'll be eyeing that this week, while we also monitor the departing and the incoming sunspots. Either side of the mega coronal hole is flanked with umbral cores. We will be watching those for flaring. Let's begin the rest over at Sky Scholar YouTube channel. Don't exactly recommend many. Dr. Robitai is one. And his video yesterday details both his trip to Observer Ranch with us in April. We'd love to see you out at the ranch that weekend. And both he and I want to offer our European observers a chance to meet at an Electric Universe and Observer adjacent event in Portugal in June. Demysticon 2025 is expected to basically be overrun with Observers and Thunderbolts fans. You will fit right in. I also want to say I may be a couple weeks late on the congratulations, but Dr. Veratsos is now the editor of the Journal of Atmospheric and Solar Terrestrial Physics. It's a big name. He's cited in my book for what might have been the ultimate game over for anyone questioning the cosmic ray cloud hypothesis. Having a guy like this in an editorial position bodes very, very well for future solar climate forcing studies. Speaking of that journal, they put an online preprint up for a paper that'll be in April's issue, confirming from a detailed mechanistic perspective that solar storms do indeed directly impact the electromagnetic environment at the surface and everywhere in between. Up next, we're off to the October 2024 solar storm. It was smaller than the May event, but it was a bigger example of that shouldn't have happened like that. It was too weak of a solar burst, causing too big of a solar storm effect here, once again, because Earth's magnetic field is weakening in the ongoing excursion, and apparently it also took out a Starlink satellite. And I'm finally, our top story, folks. A Holocene paleomagnetic record has been cored from Antarctica where the variability is somewhat lower, muted, and confused by sedimentation rate variability. Alas, the rise up from the last excursion 6,000 years ago, the Tian Chi excursion and NOAA event, to the Levantine Iron Age peak anomaly and then back down towards our modern decline into excursion again. This is the first non-Asian confirmation of Tian Chi since it was named last year. Good identification of the peak strength anomaly as well. Next excursion, next magnetic pole shift on our doorstep now. Conference day today at Observer Ranch. There is one every month. Go to ObserverRanch.com and check out the events page. Check out the Observer Bot. Get our books, our merchandise, and of course, book your reservation to come see us. It all starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.